and I made up my mind to allow him to change me, he changed me. Now I'm a different person. And granted, I'm going to give him credit because a lot of them live better lives than those with the Holy Ghost that have spoken tongues. Mm -hmm. And speak in tongues all the time. Been baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, and you meet them and think they're more saved than you. I mean, I, I, and they're bold. They're very bold about the love that they have for the Lord. And you think this boldness only comes from, can only come from somebody with the Holy Ghost that's saved for real. Coming to work, toting, doing what we used to do. They got the Bible in their hand. Let the supervisor know we're going to have a Bible class every Wednesday at lunchtime. <laughs> and, 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 and look, I worked in, in a world headquarters for 13 years. And they had a Bible class. Let everybody know. Every shift. First, second, and third. We're going to have a Bible class every week this day in this conference room. So, you know, day shift, they run meetings in their conference rooms. Well, you couldn't go in there at this particular time. We have a Bible class. And bold about their God. Bold about their Jesus. Or their Son of God, whose name is Jesus. <laughs> So then you start to ask yourself, okay, Lord, they have the passion for you. They want to be saved. They really believe that they're saved and they really believe that they're walking according to your statutes. And from far as I can tell, they are. But what happens when you come back and we believe because of what we read that they're missing the one thing that can guarantee that they're going back with you. And is it really that important? Because Lord, I know some baptized Jesus name filled with the Holy Ghost. They don't, they're not as bold as. They don't worship you like they do. And you begin to ask yourself, and you're trying to figure out, Lord, what's going on? How do I know that I'm saved? How do I know that I have the truth? Well, you put your mind at ease. Because you have to understand this one fact and have confidence in this very thing that God's word shall stand no matter what. Mm -hmm. I don't care how many people try to dismiss it. I don't care how many people try to avoid it. But the foundation to being a child of God is that you must be born again. You got to be born again. He told Nicodemus, you must be born again. You must be born of the water and of the spirit. Mm -hmm. And if you're not, you cannot enter into the kingdom of yeah. heaven. Well, if Jesus goes through such trouble to explain to Nicodemus that he must be born of the water and of the spirit, how can you dismiss water? Mm -hmm. And how can you dismiss the spirit? How can you dismiss all through Acts that they knew that they had the Holy Ghost for they heard them speak with other tongues as God gave the utterance. Mm -hmm. Well, it was just for the apostles. No, it wasn't just for the apostles because an apostle 
who didn't want to baptize a gentile because the apostle was prejudiced and thought that salvation was just for the jews so he went to cornelius his house who was a gentile not wanting to baptize cornelius not really wanting to share the gospel with cornelius and the holy ghost had to make him get up and go to a gentile's house and had to make him he sent him there to share with him salvation peter started talking about all kind of stuff other than salvation until the holy ghost just got tired of peter and the bible says the holy ghost fell on cornelius and he started speaking in tongues now peter has no excuse now because he didn't go by himself he had a entourage of jews with him and so now this Gentile is speaking in tongues. And so Peter has no choice but to say, who can forbid water? So again, here a little, there a little. Line upon line, precept upon precept. You must be born again of the water and of the spirit. So if the water is just an outside show of an inward act, why did Cornelius have to be baptized in Jesus' name? Mm -hmm. In some water. That's right. So you can't dismiss it. So how many here have been baptized in Jesus' name? Amen. How many went down in some water? When I say baptized, went down all the way in some water. Amen. How many have the Holy Ghost? Amen. How many spoke in tongues and they heard them spell, themselves speak in tongues as the Spirit of God gave utterance? Amen. Okay, so now you are born again. Your salvation is secure mm -hmm. because you have been born of the water and of the Spirit. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, does anybody else, do Do we need any help with that? Anybody need any help with that? Are you saved? Amen. Amen. You sure? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Please be sure. So, I, know, I know I went through this whole explanation trying to set up something, but are you sure that you're saved? Amen. Okay. You have to be sure that you're saved because what I'm getting ready to talk about for the next 15 minutes depends on your surety that you know you're saved. Okay? And this is how sure I want you to be. Regardless of anybody else who says they are saved, regardless of anybody else that says they are part of the body of Christ, you can tell them like a bride tells the bridesmaids at her wedding. I'm the only bride mm -hmm. here. <laughs> I'm the only one that's going to have a white dress on today. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm the only one that's going to walk down this aisle and be given away to a man today. Yes. A woman gets real selfish on her wedding day. This is my day. All right. Which is why I wanted, to be, wanted you to be so sure that you are saved because you are we are the bride of Christ and yeah. nobody can take our position uh -huh. because I have been born again. again the right way I don't need to explain nothing away I did everything the Bible told me to do mm -hmm. I was baptized in Jesus name in some water and I spoke in tongues and it wasn't me. The spirit of God gave utterance and I heard myself speak another language. Yeah. Do you know the importance of the Holy Ghost? Mm -hmm. Do you know the importance of hearing yourself speak another language? In this dispensation of grace, it is the only tangible thing. Think about it. The Holy Ghost and the sign of, let me take that back, the sign of the Holy Ghost. The sign of the Holy Ghost being speaking in another language as God gives the utterance is our only tangible evidence that God is real. Did anybody ever speak in another language before 
so fluently before the Holy Ghost and knew it wasn't you. I used to love watching the altar workers uh, back at uh, Bethlehem Temple in Clinton Township. There was one, her name was Evangelist. Uh, don't tell her I forgot her name because I just forgot it that quick. Uh, Washington. And she used to tarry and she would tarry, she was tearing, she would tarry. And as soon as they started speaking in tongues, and you know, once, you, once you're down there, you're speaking in tongues, and you know, some of us start crying and we get emotional, and, and God starts working and they're speaking in tongues and they start speaking in tongues. And I just sat there and I would watch and I get a smile on my face as I knew what she was getting ready to do. <laughs> she would tell them, Stop crying. Don't stop. Don't stop speaking in tongues, but stop crying. They stop crying. You know, they got this confused look. You know, you can tell this the confusion now mm -hmm. is on their face. And then she whispered in their ear, open your eyes. They'd open their eyes. And they still speaking in tongues. And she would tell them while they're speaking in tongues, listen to yourself. Is that you? They <laughs> <laughs> and we do just that we get this big grin on our faces yeah that's no this, and she would tell them it's not mystical it's not magic it's not it ain't nothing but God because it's important for a child that has just been born to understand that you are alive now and you are now walking in the newness of life. You've just been born again. Your birth is complete. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, I want to ask you another question. Well, I'm not going to ask the question. I'm just going to make a statement. There was a pastor that used to say in saints' meetings, you believe you've received the Holy Ghost and you walk out of this church and you can do anything that you want to do without any conviction of what you're doing at all, you've never received the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. he would say in no uncertain terms you need to come back down to this altar and <laughs> tarry again because you never received the Holy Ghost in the first place and there's something to that because the Bible also says Jesus made this statement in John he said father all those that you have given me I've lost not one and I don't believe God does anything haphazardly. Mm -hmm. He doesn't waste the Holy Ghost. Right. <laughs> he doesn't waste the Holy Ghost. And here's what I believe. I believe that once you are a child of God, you have your Father's attributes. I hadn't seen my father, and this, this is where this became clear to me. I hadn't seen my father since I was seven. My birth father, my earthly father. Didn't see him since I was seven. Well, 20 years later, I go down to where my father was born, and I meet and see his brother for the first time in 20 years. And I walk out of the gas station and I see my I see my uncle for the first time in 20 years and he looks at me. His jaw drops and his teeth, his eyes start welling up. And he says to me, It's good to see Richard Cook every now and then. <laughs> now I haven't seen Richard Cook for 20 years. <laughs> Come on now. 
yet and still every time i see his brothers and his sisters they say the same thing is good to see richard cook every now and me and the older i get the more i look like him the older i get the more i hear things like you know you do this all the time i say yeah i know i do this all the time you say you know your daddy used to do this all the time because i have attributes of my father naturally spiritually if you are truly born of the water and the spirit you're going to have attributes of your father that's why the bible says now are ye the sons of god it does not yet appear what you shall be because you aren't grown yet but this one thing you can be confident in that when he shall appear you're going to be just like him because you're going to see him as he is I can be confident in that. So now that I'm confident in that, I've introduced that thought to you to be confident in who you are. Yeah. Be confident in the fact that you're saved, sanctified, going to glory. You going to heaven? Amen. Amen. We are going to heaven. I hope. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to heaven. I've been baptized in Jesus' name, Bill with the Holy Ghost. Right. Amen. Yeah, okay, all right. I'm going to heaven. How about you? Are you, you going to heaven? Amen. All right. I got about 15 minutes now. Are you going to heaven? Amen. Amen. Okay. Well, then turn to Ephesians chapter 5. I'm going to heaven. I'm a child of God, which is also described as the bride of Christ. I got the Holy Ghost. I received the Holy Ghost. Yes. I'm sorry, I didn't get it. I received it. Mm -hmm. right. I received it. Um, quick, quick, quick side note for uh, those that haven't re haven't received the Holy Ghost yet. Just don't be ashamed. Raise your hands. You haven't received the Holy Ghost yet. Okay. Quick side note. I was praying and. I was trying to figure out how I was going to say this, but I'm going to say it. When you learn the difference between getting and receiving, you receive the Holy Ghost. Say it one more time. Anybody here that does not have the Holy Ghost, I believe that God dropped this in my heart for you. When you learn the difference between getting and receiving, you'll have the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. Here's an example. Sister Molden. <laughs> Sister Molden. Did I say that right? Molden. Okay, Sister Molden. Did you have to get your ring or did you receive your ring? A ring. Mm hmm. When you got married? Oh, I received it. Okay. <laughs> she said, My ring. Yeah. <laughs> who, who else been married? Sister uh, Blannon. When my friend, Mr. Bladen, proposed to you, did you have to get your ring or did you receive a ring? I received it. You received it. How hard was it for you to take it? <laughs> <laughs> Sister Molden, how hard was it for you to receive that ring? I had to think about it. You had to think about it. <laughs> But once you thought about it <laughs> and made up your mind that you wanted it, how hard was it for you to receive it? Oh, it was easy. It was easy. And that is a perfect example. Say that again, Sister Molden. You had to what? Think about it. You had to think about it. Uh -huh. That's all Terry and is. Y'all thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Come on. 
Jesus steadily proposing and y'all thinking about it. I don't, I don't know, Lord. Lord, I don't know, Jesus. I don't know. You're going to treat me right, Lord. Lord, you're going to treat me right. You're going to be good to me, Jesus. I don't know. I'm... <laughs> it's a catch to this ring, Lord. This is a catch. <laughs> He's trying to give you all these carrots, and you thinking about it. I'm just, I don't, I don't know, Jesus. I, I got a house of many mansions. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Counting of a thousand hills is mine, but Lord, it's I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> You still, I'm, I'm gonna give you heaven. I'm gonna give it all to you. I don't know. I don't know, Lord. It's a, it's a big commitment. Jesus, it's a big commitment. <laughs> Lord, let me think about it. Let me hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah, hallelujah. Let me think about it, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> But that's the thing about being in love with someone that you have never seen. Mm -hmm. That's the dilemma we face. Mm -hmm. Being in love with a man that we have never seen. Mm -hmm. How many have ever been involved in a long distance relationship? Just nobody, huh? <laughs> Long distance, like you know, they somewhere far away, and you here. They in the army, you know. They told you they gonna propose when they get back, you know. Y'all writing letters back and forth. Okay, how many have seen movies about a long distance relationship? <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> and I'm gonna ask the ladies because. We are the bride of Christ, and there's a reason why the Bible describes us as such. What really attracts you to a man? A lot of things. What else? Things he does, yes. How he treats you. Principles. 
do you understand all we're left with with the man that told us he was going to marry us is a big letter it's huge 66 chapters in this letter 66 books it's 66 books in this letter of all right of how he feel about us what he's done for us how he died for us yes how he loves us how he cares about us all that good stuff. His promises. Never lied to you. Mm hmm. Never, never cheated on you. No, cheat on me. <laughs> that came out true. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at all the wives he got. The man that we're going to marry has left us with a letter. Yes. A love letter. Yes, and told us, behold, you're going to find me in the volume of this letter. Mm -hmm. So Ephesians chapter 5 is interesting because, and I'm not going to go to one of my favorite topics of chapter 5, because it's a saints meeting topic. I'm going to go to what Paul said he was really talking about. Pastors being men who are married for years. Jump to chapter verse 22. Quick. Yeah. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband. Some of the sisters squirm. I just jumped to 25. Some of the men, you know, <laughs> chest poke out. Some of the wives look at the husband sitting next to him like, mm hmm, right. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't Jesus. <laughs> And, and, and there begins Paul's dissertation on marriage, the roles of the wife and the role of the husband. And he goes into detail for the husband is the head of the wife. And even as Christ is head of the church and he is the savior of the body and husbands love your wives, even as Christ has loved the church and that he might sanctify and cleanse it. And so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies for men have yet hated their own flesh, but we are members of his body, of his flesh and of his bones. Then you get to 31. But this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife. They too shall be one flesh. Mm. Shows you the beauty of marriage when a man and a woman join together and they are no longer man and woman but they're husband and wife. Yeah. And then Paul throws us a curve in verse 32. And he says, this is a great mystery because I'm not talking about a man and a woman. Mm -hmm. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. This gives us license and a great example of how we should treat Jesus and how we can expect Jesus to treat us. And he gives us examples of how he's going to treat us throughout the scriptures as his bride. Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah 31 verse 13 was it yes 31 verse 13 I believe no 31 was it 31 or 13 I thought I had it what are you looking for with loving kindness will I draw them. I have 
31-3, not 31-13, 31-3. Jeremiah says, The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. I want you to pay attention to the word loving kindness because loving kindness in Hebrew means the same thing as grace means in Hebrew. And so we're looking at this as a relationship between us and God. And how many times have that been an example to us? We are to be, in, you have to have a relationship with God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to have a relationship with God. You got to have a relationship with God. And I heard it so many times that I questioned what in the world is a relationship with God? Well, you got to, you know, then you get the regular answers. You got to pray every day. You gotta uh, read his word every day. You gotta commune with him every day. You know, we get spiritual with it. You gotta, you know, commune with the Lord and find your closet. You know, you gotta talk to Jesus all the time. You know, I was like, I, it wasn't clicking with me until I put it in practical terms for me. And I started thinking about it. Women, how many of you want a relationship with a man that never talks to you? He don't call you. Except when he wants to. Once a week. Check on you, see how you doing. Hey now, what's up? You all right? Okay, good. I'm going to just check and see if you're still breathing. Yeah, I love you. Mm -hmm. Really? Man, how many want a relationship with a woman that you never see? Hey, can we go out tonight? No. <laughs> <laughs> No, man, no, no. Mm -mm. Yeah, I, I'm tired. <laughs> we go to the same place all the time. But honey, it's the best I can do. I'm tired. I gotta do my hair. I do your hair. Yeah, I gotta do my hair. Basketball wives is coming on. I, I can't go. <laughs> this is constantly. What else? What, what's another part? What's, what else? Crap. Oh, have mercy. <laughs> she got personal. <laughs> What else? What else is on TV? Real House, Real, Real Housewives of Atlanta. Housewives of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, Girls Club. Um, Law and Order. Law and Order. Law and Order. Um, CSI. Martin. Grey's Anatomy. Private <laughs> Practice. <laughs> the History Channel. <laughs> Anything. <laughs> I've been working all day. You work part time. I'm still tired. <laughs> the man tells you he making all kind of excuses. Um, Joe called me and I, you know, I'm going over there. That was Monday night, Tuesday. Frank called me. I'm, you know, I'm gonna go over there. Wednesday night, I'm going to the east side. <laughs> Thursday night, I'm going to the west side. <laughs> I called you on Sunday. I was asleep all day. I didn't hear the phone. 
My battery died. I couldn't find my charger. We got a million of them. Both of us got a million of them. Now contrast it. God calls. Hey, the door's going to be open at 9.30. I expect you here for breakfast. Cooking you a meal. Mm. Lord, I'm tired. Mm -mm. <laughs> I'm going to be here waiting on you at 9 o'clock. Well, Lord, I ain't wake up till... 8.45 I had to do my hair <laughs> yeah I did wake you up mm -hmm. Lord, I had to do my hair I had to get my nails done anything I couldn't find the right thing that I wanted to wear Jesus okay well come to Bible class I'm, I want to talk to you it was just a hard day at work today. I, I can't make it. I'll see you next week. Well, <laughs> okay, Lord, I'll come. But don't keep me long. Right, don't. <laughs> He said, 15 minutes, Jesus. Yeah, 30 minutes. <laughs> Is Grace and coming on tonight? No. <laughs> 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 but what happens when we start making excuses to the people that we say we're in a relationship with? I mean, we're laughing, we're joking, and it's good, that's great, because you're True. finally understanding a relationship. How do you, how would that make you feel if the one that you wanted to be in a relationship with did you like that? And the one that wants to be in a relationship with you keeps proving his worth over and over and over and over again to you. Even though you don't give him time, you don't give him conversation, you don't never want to be with him. But when you do call, he right there. When you do need him, he shows up right there. When you do ring his phone, he answers first ring, he right there. Always telling you he loves you. Always telling you he cares about you. Always telling you he'll hide you. Always telling you he'll protect you. Always telling you that he cares about you. Always doing the things that are necessary to keep you sustained. Mm -hmm. Giving you life. Giving you health. Giving you strength. Daily. Hourly. Every minute. Every second. He's always doing what he promised you that he was going to do. But it's hard for me to keep one promise. I can't. I don't feel like. I don't want to. I forgot. I went to sleep. He wakes you up in the middle of the night. Honey, I want you to talk to me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm in love with this pillow a little too much right now to be bothered with you Jesus and then my Jesus who is going to marry me gives me a promise 31 and 3 of Jeremiah with loving kindness have I drawn thee. How does loving kindness draw us? 
i'm going give you an example of loving kindness and then i'll be through because i want you to think about this and this is what this was all about first of all you have to be confident that you are he is and that he is yours second of all you have to know that i am saved and there's no doubt about it i am god's and there's no doubt about it okay i'm i'm the lord's and that's it that settles it he gave me the holy ghost i baptized in jesus name i'm 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 his that's why he gave me the holy ghost to prove to me that i am his and what god does he does well and I know I'm his because I have his attributes. One of the attributes of his that I have is that I cannot go out here and do anything and not feel conviction because I am acting out of character of who I am. Mm -hmm. We talked about all this. Mm -hmm. I don't care what I try to do. I could not not look like Richard Cook 20 years, 30 years, 40 years later. I could not not look like him. You have the Holy Ghost. Yes, you're going to fall. Count on all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Yes, you're going to mess up. Yes, you might fail, God. But guess what? You cannot be God's and not end up looking like him at the end of the day. Because I have the Holy Ghost, I just can't sin consistently. I just, I can't, I, continuously, I just can't do it. Yeah, it's in me. Yes, it's in my flesh. Yes, I have the temptation all the time, but this Holy Ghost, this spiritual DNA, keeps bringing me right back to where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> I can't get away from it. I was upset with my father for some years and I still ended up looking like him. <laughs> Couldn't get away from it. I still scratch my head like him. I still laugh like him. I still... You know, I could not get away from who I was. Child of God, son of God, you cannot get away from who you are. Yes. And guess what? Here's the beautiful thing that separates you from the evangelical. It's not your decision. Mm -hmm. If I had my choice, I would have looked like my mother. <laughs> Everybody know my mother laughing. <laughs> but I didn't have the choice. Thank God we don't have the choice. Get used to it. You're God's. Point blank. You are the Lord's. Before the foundation of the world, you were chosen. I just thank God that he wrote my name down and not the one next to me. Mm -hmm. He chose me, not the one next to me. Mm -hmm. He loved me, not the one next to me. Mm -hmm. He put me in the body, not the one next to me. Oh, and the one next to me acted a whole lot better than I do. <laughs> but he still chose me. Mm -hmm. Guess what? That's part of loving kindness. I'm going to give you an example of loving kindness. Those of you that are married, those of you that have been married, those of you that have ever been in a relationship, you can relate to this. I'm, I'll, well, yeah, I'll take the role of the husband. Okay? When I proposed, she loved the ring. Oh, this is beautiful. This is lovely. It shines so bright. You'll have a meal all the time when you come home from work. When we got past the wedding, <laughs> I'm hungry. There's some bologna in the refrigerator. We got any towels? There's some dirty clothes in there. There's a washing machine right next to it. <laughs> The wedding 
past and now we are in the marriage paul uses the example in ephesians chapter five husbands love your wives as christ that love the church christ says with loving kindness will i draw you but how long does loving kindness take to draw so now i'm gonna put it in a wise perspective when are you gonna fix this window i've been asking you to fix this window for years when are you gonna fix this window when are you gonna fix it? When are you gonna fix it? When are you gonna fix it? You get on my nerve. <laughs> when are you gonna fix it? <laughs> when are you gonna fix it? When are you gonna paint this house? When are you gonna paint the room? Didn't you tell me you was gonna do this? Didn't you tell me you was gonna do that? And our way of getting what we want ends up turning into a big blowout argument because now I'm mad at you, now you mad at me, I don't want nothing to do with you, you don't want nothing to do with me, and all it was was I just had to screw something in the wall. But God says, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Lord, I don't feel like coming to church today, I love you. Lord, I don't feel like praying today, I bless you, I'll bless you. Lord, I, feel, I don't feel like going to church this morning. I still woke you up. Mm -hmm. Lord, I don't feel like paying my tithes. I still made sure you got paid. Mm. Lord, I don't feel like, Lord, I don't feel like, Lord, I don't feel like. Lord says, I love you, I love you, I love you. Lord, I messed up again. I love you. Lord, I feel at the same spot again. I love you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I sinned again. I love you. Lord, I failed you again. I love you. Lord, I keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. I love you. Lord, in me, I want to do right. I just can't find how to do it. I love you. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, there's a problem. I got an issue that I just can't get rid of. My grace is sufficient. Come mm -hmm. on. All right. Thank you. Lord, I got this problem that I just can't put down. My grace is sufficient, and I love you. I thought you told me you was going to pray tonight. I just didn't feel like it. I love you. I thought you told me you was going to read this chapter tonight. I'm tired, Lord. I'm tired. Okay, sweetie, I love you. How long does that take for the one that you keep telling you love to finally wake up and act like they love you too. All right. mm -hmm. With loving kindness have I drawn thee. Loving kindness doesn't bring about the same or bring about the result as quickly as so we think. This is how we operate. Loving kindness does not bring about the desired result quick enough for us. Mm -hmm. I got to show them that I mean business. Mm -hmm. So my wrath, my wrath has got to come down now. Yeah. I got to make sure that my point is made now. I need you to do this for me right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. Loving kindness is long suffering. Loving kindness yeah. is patience. Loving mm -hmm. kindness is uh, meekness, loving kindness is love, loving kindness is joy, loving kindness is peace, loving kindness is long suffering, loving kindness is grace. Grace, you need all of that to have grace. Mm -hmm. Galatians 5 22. And like I said, we're done.
Galatians 5, 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. What is found in grace? Temperance. Mm -hmm. I got to have temperance to give grace. What's found in grace? Meekness. Temperance is self-control. Meekness. Meekness is knowing that you have the power to do something, but you don't do it. Because you love the one whom it will affect. Meekness. Faith. Even though you tell me that you're going to do it I, and you don't do it, I still have the faith that you will do it. Because I'm going to love you so much that you're going to do it. Goodness. I'm just going to be good to you. Gentleness. I'm just going to keep treating you gentle. Long suffering. I'm just going to be patient with you. Peace. I'm going to give you peace that passes all understanding because you keep getting into the same stuff over and over again. Lord, this is driving me crazy. Why do I have peace? Because I love you. Even though you did it. You caused the trouble. But I'm going to give you peace in the midst of the trouble. Joy. What can you say about joy? Just happiness and love. With loving kindness or with grace will I draw you. How do you know that you're falling in love with a man that you have never seen? How do you know that you're falling in love with a God that you have never seen? And I'll give you a good indication. When you make up in your mind that I will no longer take advantage of the grace that he continues to give me. I know you're going to forgive me. You told me if I confess my faults, you would forgive me. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to take advantage of that anymore. That's right. I know as soon as I fall, you're going to pick me right back up. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to take you for granted anymore. Mm -hmm. I know you love me. I know you care about me, Lord. I'm not going to take you for granted anymore. <coughs> I know the Bible class is for me, so I'm going to be here because I'm not going to take you for granted anymore. That's right. I know you blessed me to have this job, so I'm going to show up at Sunday school on time yes. because I'm not going to take you for granted anymore. Yes. I'm going to sing in the choir with all my might because I'm not going to take you for granted anymore. Yes. I'm going to be in every prayer meeting just so I can pray and talk to you because I don't want to take you for granted anymore. Lord, if I got to fall asleep while I'm praying, I used to fall asleep on the phone when I was talking to that girl. I used to fall asleep on the phone when I was talking to that boy as a teenager. I'm going to have that teenage love, first love for you, Lord, because I'm not going to take you for granted anymore. That is when Jeremiah 31 and 3 will open up to you. Because you finally realize, Lord, the consequences that I suffered were not because you were judging me, but they were just because they were consequences of my actions. Mm -hmm. You didn't judge me. You just protected me from my own self. Mm -hmm. Because of loving kindness, he will keep drawing you. How many thank the Lord for his loving kindness? Amen. Hallelujah. How many thank the Lord for his loving kindness? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank How many don't want to take him for granted anymore? Amen. Amen.
how many don't want to take them for granted anymore a man a man with loving kindness he will draw you he will continue to draw you with loving kindness why do you think the scripture in proverbs says he you know kindness is just coals on, on your head i can't remember how the scripture go but you keep coals on their head through kindness it's i, I think it's coals it's coals i can't think of how it go but that's how it go Kindness are goes. Kindness are like coals on your enemy's head. That's how it is. And the Lord just keeps loving you and loving me and loving me and loving me and loving me through it all. I keep falling at the same thing over and over and over and over again, and He keeps loving me more and more and more and more. How does that end up making me feel about how I'm treating the one that says He loves me? Makes me want to love him. I don't know about you. I said it makes me want to love him. I don't know about you. I said it makes me just want to love him. I don't know about you. Amen. Amen. It makes me want to be worthy of the ring he gave me. <laughs> hey, I'm trying to be worthy of this Holy Ghost. How many, how many are trying to be worthy of this Holy Ghost? Amen. I'm trying to be worthy of this Holy Ghost. And it's so wonderful that I never will be worthy of it. That's right. But he still loves me Thank just the same. Thank you, Lord. With loving kindness hath he drawn me. Somebody give God a praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Don't take it for granted.